What's your favorite scary movie? It's one of this. Welcome back to another episode of the Arrow and the Head Show. Of course, that makes me me, and that makes you the Arrow. Mr. John Fallon, buddy, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, man. That makes me me, and that makes, makes, me, makes you, you you. you yes. All right. All right. I'm John good, the good. Arrow Fallon. Yeah, you look good. You look healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. It's called vodka. So, um... Can I roll, moisturize? Yeah, a little bit. No, I moisturize. Why not? You got to do it. As you can see, uh, Lance and I are trying to uh, keep off the cuff going, which is our Thursday redux air on the head show, if you will. We're trying really hard. Um, and we came up with a unique, I would say, uh, idea as to do this particular off the cuff. But before we get into that, um, what are you drinking, my man? I, I forgot that I needed to bottle one of my meads and it's been sitting around with a bunch of bananas in it. So it's a hard thing to then filter out. So I finally did it over the weekend because I, I was working my butt off and I decided I was going to do all the work I could. So I have my banana mead. Nice. How is it? How does it taste? Eh, yeah. I would do it different. The water in here sucks. I got to figure out a better system for water. But hey, it's it's free booze or at least it's a, it's a price deduction booze and it ain't terrible. Right. So. What about you? Awesome, bro. Um, I went simple, easy peasy. Just a uh, vodka orange juice, leftover bottle of <clears throat> Seagram's, the primo shit. So I think it's Seagram's gym. I didn't know they did anything else. So you kind of sending me a little bit here. I've never had Seagram's anything but gin. I am I am flabbergasted that they do other liquors. So well, they do, and you know, it is what it is. It gets the job done, as I always say. So mm -hmm. on that. Cheers to you, my man. Cheers to all of you. Let's have a good time. Hello, my friend! Hey! Mm. Eh, sorry. So, um, eh, <laughs> banana, banana drink. You hey. have that? Mas o menos. Eh, vale, gracias. Um, so, yeah, on today's Half the Cuff, we are actually going to premiere a short film, a very 90s-ish, I would say, inspired uh, thriller called Monsters Are Real. It is written and directed by Ron Huff Stutter. Anyways, we're going to get Ron on. He'll correct us about his fucking name. And starring uh, Mark Natoli, who does happen to be a, a, a friend of mine. I, I met him on a set of a film in 2000. 18 this uh not very good robin hood film but uh you know we struck up a friendship and uh you know that's it struck up a friendship so i guess how about we get the boys on and uh see how that goes and then we're gonna play the movie and then stick around after the movie because we're gonna ask them a couple of questions about it and uh, they'll be done on that what do you think let's rock it out man all right let me call him all right so here we are. We have Mr. Mark Natoli, and you were the lead in the short film. Is that right? Oh, I was. Yep. Are you the fluffer as well, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the lead in uh, Monsters of Real, yes, definitely. Definitely. And, uh, of course, the writer, director, Ron, help me with your last name. Ron Huffstutter. Huffstutter. Thank you guys for uh, joining us. Actually, this is something new. We've never done this on our show before where we bring in filmmakers, talk, play their film, talk again, all the best love and kisses. So you're a bit like our scapegoat, if you will, to see if uh, this works. So we'll see. Exciting stuff. Appreciate it as well, guys. Hey, no oh, problem, dude. It's a good little movie, man. It's a good little movie. Oh, thanks. Um, Lance, before before we start playing the movie, uh, do you have a couple of questions uh, for our humble guest? So, I, I so I, besides what I saw, I know nothing else. So, just so you guys know, if there is a history to this, um, I, I'm not privy to it. So, I guess my first question is always: when you make a short, is is this a proof of concept for you? Are you trying to turn this into more, or is this sort of set as this sort of like little tale of horror? 
Oh, that's that's a good question. Yeah, um, I mean, it's written as a short, and that's kind of. I would love it to be a proof of concept. If somebody asked me to like write a feature script for it, I actually have it all kind of like mapped out, like how I want to do it. And uh, definitely the the uh, actress from the movie keeps bugging me, and she wants me to do a you know a feature version of it. And I would love to do a feature version of it. Honestly, like there's there's a lot more story in it to go because it kind of you haven't seen it yet, but it kind of like stops. I have a habit of like the shorts, like stopping in the middle of it, you know, like something traumatic happens and it just kind of rolls the credits. So I think there's more to the story too. Yeah. Yeah. That, and things I think, I think a short's always, uh, apart from just being the short, I think it's always got the potential for a uh, proof of concept as well, just depending on the audience. Um, I think, I think that's what we usually do. You know, yeah, with everything. Definitely. So, and I could mm. see it too. I could see that, that, that particular story, uh, working as a feature for sure mm. uh, definitely it's a you know nice little thriller you know dramatic thriller if you will well look we're not going to spoil the fucking movie for you guys right now and dolls of course so we're going to play it stay till the end we're going to come back bust our balls a bit about it all right check it out yard is going to be great for you guys when your baby is born because then you can play out there you don't have to worry about the kid running off we do have an electric fireplace here even though the house has central heating and air and you found the dining room so uh i can get the paperwork drawn up for you if you want me to I'll tell you. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. Cody, over here, bud. Yeah. No, of course. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, hold, hold on, I, I've got to go. I missed you so much, buddy. Liz, I, I, I just wanted to see Cody. You know you're not supposed to be here, Hank. Sweetheart, can you go play with your friends for a little bit? I gotta talk to your dad alone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
What part about a restraining order don't you understand? You can't just show up here without a phone call or without supervised visitation. What are you doing, Hank? My phone got turned off. I, I'm barely hanging on here, Liz. That's not my problem anymore. Have you... Have you signed the divorce papers I, yet? I, I, I just want to talk. Why can't we just work something out between the two of us? Like, no lawyers. You lost that right the second you put your hands on me. It was a mistake. I mean... I'm sorry I lost control, but how can you still hold that against me? Just sign the goddamn divorce paper so we can both move on with our lives. I, I don't want to move on with my life. We have a son, we, we have a home. How can you throw that all away? Let go of me! Get your hands off no, of me! How can you throw let that go. all away? Let go! Let go! Chill out, man. Liz! Hey, chill out! Back <laughs> off! Chill out. Liz! What is it, buddy? I'm scared. What are you scared of? Monsters. There's no such thing, I promise. If monsters aren't real, why do people die and why do people hurt each other? Well, they're not monsters. They're just people that are lost their way. There's a lot of bad people in the world, but they all didn't start out that way. What happened to them? I'm not quite sure, buddy. It'd have to be something pretty bad to make you go crazy. I didn't know if you're crazy or not. Hmm. I know one thing. I know you're not crazy. All we can do is be good to each other and do the right thing. And always stick together. That's what families do. Okay? Okay. Do you even love me anymore? No. I'm so sorry. I don't. Who is it? I'm not. I, what are you talking Please. about? Please don't lie to me! I'm not seeing you! Liz, Liz, I'm sorry. Get off of me. It's Chris. I'm screwing Chris. Are you mad at me? Good morning, buddy. Daddy, what are you doing here? Mommy went up to the cabin earlier this morning. We had a long talk and worked some things out. I know it's been a tough couple of months, but Mommy needed some time to forgive Daddy, okay? Okay. It's gonna go back to the way it was. Okay. Is that what you want? Us to be a family again? Good boy. Eat your cereal. And then go pack some clothes. We're gonna go camping, do some fishing. It's gonna be great. Okay. I love you, Cody. I love it too, Daddy. Daddy, where are we going? Going up to the cabin. And we're gonna see Mommy. 
everything's gonna be okay, buddy. Ready for a special weekend, kiddo? Yeah. Nice. Get your bag. Go. Good boy. Where's mommy? She must be out on a hike. Why don't you go in the cabin and I'll go see if I can find her. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm tied to a tree in the woods. Everything is not okay. It will be. I, I promise. I, I just needed to spend some time without sun. Okay? What do you think this is gonna do to him? Seeing his mother tied up like this. I mean, he's that, gonna be... That all depends on you. I, I just want us to be a family again. That, that's all. Is this what family looks like to you? We're not a family anymore, Abe. Why don't you get that? Look at what you're doing. This isn't you. I know you. <laughs> You're the one that broke up this family. I've been trying to keep us together for Cody's sake. Do you know how many times I've sat out here in these woods thinking, knowing that you were in our home with someone else, sharing our bed with our son a few feet away? Do you have any idea what that did to me, Liz? I lost my job. I had to move out here and live in the woods like an animal. What have you sacrificed for this family? And you know, after all this, I still love you. Sorry, what I did to you, Hank. I really am. Come on. Let's go see our son. Hey, son, I'm gonna teach you how to be a man. Okay. I never took you hunting before, but after how brave you've been today, I know you're gonna do the right thing. Okay. Okay? Now I need you to look through this scope. Here you go, buddy. You see that out there? Yeah. Hmm. What is that out there? Remember when I told you monsters weren't real? Yeah. I was wrong. Monsters are real. They just disguise themselves to look like us, and they try to tear apart everything we've ever loved. Oh, my God. What is that? Is that? Now why would you look back through the store and take it inside? It's up to you to save our family, kiddo. What's going on? 
Daddy needs you to face your fears and kill the monster. What is happening? What is happening? Oh my god. This is sick. Don't do this. Shut up. For the love of Cody, God. Cody, look at me. Look at me. What the fuck? Oh. Now we're a family again. Oh, bravo, guys. That was uh, good stuff. Really good stuff. Thank you. Uh, Lancey, you want to take it? Yeah. Okay. So before the uh, the show, we're talking about like how you, you seem to always like undone the dramatic switch. Uh, I think for something like this, it, it as a short, I think that's the best place to leave it because it is this sort of build up. It's this tensions tension story, right? And like, you know, you don't really know, like you kind of guess, even though I'm not gonna lie to you, part of me is like, I hope Mark's a good guy. I want this to be the twist where the poor guy's just getting screwed, but uh, <laughs> not so much, not so much. But I mean, that that has that has that. I mean, I mean. <laughs> hey, now we're a family. Come on. <laughs> this is the thing, and you know what? And this is why we like the script so much too. Now, admittedly, Hank's an absolute nut job, but the uh, the the idea of monsters are real, and you know, people push each other, and everyone's pushing each other's buttons in the you know wrong areas, and people can just snap. I think that's something me and Ron spoke about when we actually. Uh, move forward with this script. Um, it, was, it was definitely something for us to to grow on that uh, that concept. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. And I love um, showing it to people, especially couples that I'm, I'm like <laughs> screenings for because like the guy will be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I relate to him. You know, he was. <laughs> I get why he did it." And then they'll start arguing <laughs> and have couples arguing. So I've probably broken up relationships with this movie already. So that's fantastic. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, for you, uh, Mark, what was the uh, most challenging thing uh, in, in terms of your performance, in, in terms of playing this role? What was the most challenging uh, aspect of it? Most challenging aspect. You know what's funny? I mean, everything we do, I mean, as you know, John, I mean, I think it's all a challenge. I don't know. I kind of, um, I don't know. <laughs> I think the whole thing, I just enjoy it all. I mean, I enjoy what I do, so I, so I didn't really see. Like, uh, there, there wasn't, like, I mean, one scene that was harder to execute than another, like, when you're you're in the car and you're a fucking mess or, uh, you know, with the kid at the end or. You know what? The most challenging scene yeah. was the waterfall scene, right? In the water, <laughs> trying to find that position, right, with skeleton crew going through the actual, what, forest of Oregon. I think it was freezing at the time. The water was cold as trying to find a little ledge. So if we're getting into, maybe not getting into the character, because I mean, I, I enjoyed that so much. So I didn't really, uh, you know, but but as far as that uh, that shot there, that was the most challenging shot for sure. At least you uh, didn't have a nude scene right after, you know, because, you know, cold water, we know. You know. I, the, <laughs> the, it's also why we only shot from the back. <laughs> it was cut from the script. And what, what, what about you, Ron? Uh I mean, how many days did it take you guys to shoot this? We shot for what, like four days, I think. I think that was like only four days, all in uh, Southern Oregon. Um, so we did a uh, Rogue River and um, outside of Ashland, Oregon, and stuff like that. So we had like the scenes that were. It was actually a cabin in the woods that you know, like in the middle of nowhere. You know, like barely had cell service. There were some like you know old people that kind of like ran it and stuff like that, and they had no idea what they were in store for. The circus kind of came to town and <laughs> and kind of freaked them out at first. And we had to have our AD and the production manager kind of like you know calm them down and you know like bring massage them him a bit. Exactly, I think she like made a like made a pie or something the second day. <laughs> so we had those days there, and then we had um, and then we had uh, days in a. Uh, what two days in Rogue River or something like that? So like we go to uh, Airbnb and into that. Ron, I got a question. Uh, before we start the the film, John was mentioning how this has that sort of thriller vibe. I found it to be very reminiscent of thrillers from the '90s, in particular. Um, it has that sort of relationship based kind of thing where like the, the guys get screwed over, something gets out of hand. 
Uh, and that's obviously my interpretation of it, um, whether it be true or that. not. Uh, what was your, I guess, what were the influences in terms of the movies that you were trying to achieve with this, this kind of style and tone? As I sort of said, 90s, because I'm, yeah, I'm a 90s kid. <laughs> like, I went to high school in the 90s and stuff like that. And that, those, that's, like, probably my favorite decade of films, that in the 80s. So I'm, I'm sure it's just, like, an influence just, you know, for being a part of that. And, you know, there's a lot of characters and stuff. There isn't, like, a lot of, like, big, like, manly characters anymore, like, in Hollywood. You know what I mean? There isn't, like, the... It always kind of seems there isn't a lot of tough guys anymore. So like that's I'm I'm really glad like Mark kind of like filled that space, you know, like some a man that's like tough and vulnerable at the same time. And I don't see a lot of that influences. Oh man, you know, just off the top of my head, you, you think of stuff like Cape Fear or, or you know, just like other psycho movies, but um I don't know. That's that's a good question. <laughs> I'm very <laughs> I'm trying to think of what influence it was, like maybe um was it falling down with Michael Douglas? A little vibe of that and stuff like that. Just, just putting somebody in a pressure situation, you know, that was probably like a normal guy and stuff like that. And he, he was put in a pressure situation and he snapped. And that's that's the interesting part to me, you know, like and we've all been in probably relationships with you know girls that cheated on you or <laughs> you know, you know, just drove you insane. And that's kind of you know where it's at. You know, that's 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 the the mentality is just hearing horror stories from other friends and, you know, your own life experience. And, you know, how would you react? And this is like the height, the ceiling of how you would react, you know, the, yeah, yeah. the actually the the thing you shouldn't do. <laughs> probably the thing you, you should probably avoid. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Well, oh, I was going to say, so what's what's next for, for you guys, uh, Mark as an actor, Ron as a writer-director? I'm assuming you produced it too. I didn't look at the end credits, but there you go. So uh, let's start. Yeah, no, I noticed. Trust me. Uh, uh, Mark, what's next for you? Anything in the pipeline you can talk um, about? Or? Well, there's uh, there's quite a few things and things I know you know quite a few of them as well, John, of course. So, uh, done, oh my goodness. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I don't know what we, uh, start with, with the one with the money in the bank. Start with yeah, that. I know. Well, 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 that's the thing. That's the thing. So, so, uh, so we're still growing films. We, we, we've got quite a few that we're producing, uh, features, shorts. These days we're starting to veer off from, but, um, got, got quite a few things in the pipeline. Some in Australia, we've got a few scripts as well, myself and Ron, um, so yeah, just, just uh, I mean, as you guys know, just always pushing forward and keeping content and and seeing what locks next. So um, yeah, and just keep pushing, man. Sooner or later, something snaps. That's and, it. Uh, you could, you know, but it could, you know, that's what you know. People that are not in the film industry, and I'm not talking uh, guys and dolls about the studio system, which is completely a different animal than independent filmmaking it could take like fucking five six seven eight years to get a movie off the ground man yeah. and it's just how it is you know or and i'm sure you guys could relate to this for me how how many times i got to the finish line and God, crumbled and like, fuck three years of my life right here you know but yeah get back up go again it's you know you really got to love this shit to do this shit yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. Any indie filmmaker that if you actually make a movie and put it out, man, that's just that's half the battle, you know. Yeah, but, yeah I mean, that's that's insane. That's a huge achievement. I think a lot of people don't understand that because they have this critical view of, you know, like how studio pictures are made and everybody's a critic. But just just to make a movie and put it out is insane. And it's a it's a crazy process. Um, as, yeah, do you have as, anything going yeah yeah we uh, i've got about like six different feature scripts and i'm like mark said we're i'm done with making shorts there's about I, i've made like five shorts at this point and that's the thing and it's really hard to you know sell them get them to find a market and that's really yeah. the thing is so if we're going to invest money in, in something else or, or get investments for something else it's, it's going to be feature all the way uh we have a genie horror film that's possibly mm -hmm. it's kind of the next one i got a comedy horror script uh some dramas and stuff like that i kind of I kind of like hit all genres, but yeah. obviously my favorite genre is horror and comedy. And that's, and that's what this show is all about, man. Yeah, for sure. Yep. For this sure. is the fan base. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's the dream right now. Well, awesome guys. Thank you so much for um, sharing your short 
with us and them, which is us. Just go with that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing the short. Thank you for stopping by the show. We really appreciate it. And definitely keep Lance and us, uh, you know, in the loop in terms of your future projects when the money's in the bank. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll have you guys uh, back here sooner than later. All right. Okay. Awesome. Stuff. Uh, I really appreciate uh, you guys having us too. Always, Matoli. Always. Thank Peace. You. Later on, Lance, go fuck yourself. <laughs>